Good morning. Good morning. Will you join in our first hymn found on page 97 in the chorus book of Jesus is Lord? And Linda has put in the bulletin the scriptures that go along with each song. So if you have a minute, you might take a look at those scriptures and see how this song came to be. Would you all please stand? Our next song is new, 
melody may be uh, one that you know, but it's called I Thank the Lord for You. And with everything that's been going on in our different con uh, lives in this congregation, um, it, I thought it was very appropriate that we would sing something happy to do with thanking our friends. Page 115.
What an amazing opportunity you have spread out before us. A chance to make a difference for you in a desperately hurting world. Help us to see the needs you want us to see. To react in a way that honors you. And to bless others by serving them gladly with practical expressions of your love. Help us to be Jesus' hands and feet. And through your spirit, give us the strength and wisdom that we need to fulfill your plan for us in our generation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Okay, we're waiting. Well, today, if you've noticed, there's one verse in your bulletin. We're going to be looking at a lot of verses that talk about truth. But the one I put in here, I want you to kind of ponder on. A little bit. It's kind of loaded. This is what Jesus says to the disciples, and John records it. He says, When the Spirit of truth comes. Now, what's he talking about? He's talking about Pentecost, right? That's when the Holy Spirit is going to come. This is towards the, the latter part of his ministry. He says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. Why don't you just let that settle for just a moment? There are so many things packed into this little sentence here. First, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. He says it's the spirit of what? Truth. He'll guide you into what? All truth. But then he says something interesting. He says, for he will not speak on his own authority. What? You have to realize again, where are they at? They're in Jerusalem. They're in those outlying areas. Who was occupying Jerusalem besides the Jews? The Romans. There had been so much Gentile um, influence. Sorry, my brain's not working today. He says, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Do you realize that this is where Jesus is talking about the Trinity? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all are God, all from God. And yet, Jesus said what? I cannot speak on my own accord, only what the Father tells me. I cannot heal unless the Father allowed him. He says the Holy Spirit here will speak truth, but only, not on his own authority, but whatever he hears from God, he will speak. And he will declare to you all these things to come. Whoa. So is that talking about the past? Nope. Is it talking about the present? Nope. It's talking about prophecy. Again, prophecy. We think that prophecy is always telling the future. That's part of it. But prophecy is just being the spokesperson. It's the word of God. It's Jonah was a prophet who prophesied because he spoke what God told him to. Isaiah was. Now, did Isaiah, he talked about what was right there and, and going on, but he also talked about things that were to come. What a lot of people don't realize is the very first book, of uh, the first chapter of Isaiah is all talking about the end times. <laughs> Those seven years of tribulation. Most people don't even realize that because you wouldn't make the connection. Well, I wanted to look at what the truth was that John was talking about. There's a lot of different scriptures that refer to this. John 4.24 says, God is spirit. Oh, so we said the Trinity right there, didn't we? The spirit is its own separate, but yet God is spirit. Then he says, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. 1 John 1, 6. He says, if we say we have fellowship with him, while we walk in darkness, we lie 
and we do not practice truth. John 8, 32, Jesus said, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Paul goes on to talk about the truth. In 2 Timothy, he says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. You may say, well, okay, this is all from Jesus in the New Testament. Guess what? King David talked about this in Psalms. Psalms 86.11. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. And he passed that down, that truth down to Solomon, because Solomon said in Proverbs 12, 22, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully and truthfully are his delight. So if I piqued your, question, I piqued your uh, curiosity, we talked about truth. What is truth? Jesus answered it in John 14, 6. I'm sure the disciples were sitting there going, well, we know you, but what is all this talk about truth and truth and the spirit of truth? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Whoa! How radical was that that day they knew he was the Messiah the Meshach but to the Jews how radical is this because they did not look at Jesus as the son of God they kept hearing these words about truth and truth and the spirit of truth and what is the truth and then Jesus point blank takes, tells him who here has had the opportunity to watch season 4 of The Chosen is anybody Gosh, you're in for treat. But the sad, overlying tone of this entire season was that the disciples just didn't get it. The Pharisees just didn't get it. He had been speaking in parables. He had been speaking in, in stories. But then he comes out and point blank tells them who he is, what his mission is, and what the truth is. And they still didn't get it. Or as I would say, I think some of the disciples were just choosing not to get it because they knew what that meant as he was getting ready to ride into Jerusalem for the last time. The truth. When the Spirit comes, do you realize that as a Christian, if you've been baptized, you already have the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit already has come upon you. And if that's the case, he says, he will guide you into all truth. Think about that for a moment. We live in a day and age, you know, like I said last week, for those of you who were there at the outdoor service, we talked about Ecclesiastes and King Solomon. And the man who is so wise and, and he is being burdened with this wisdom because he's starting to go mad and, and he says, it's meaningless, it's meaningless, it's all pointless. He says, if I build something up, how do I know somebody behind me isn't going to come tear it down? And then it would have been meaningless. And who's to say, if I, I put all these rules and these laws and practice and the person behind me comes in and gets rid of all of it, then it was pointless. It was meaningless. He says, what comes around goes around. The wind blows this way and that way and the water keeps raining and filling things up and the sun keeps going around. Moon, day turns to night. Nothing changed. He says, nothing is new under the sun. History repeats so, what if we could go back and tell Solomon right after he wrote that? Dude, <laughs> you're going to have three books in the Bible. Your legacy 
legacy is going to live on for thousands of years. <laughs> the temple that you build, yes, will eventually be destroyed in 70 AD, but the remnants are still going to be there and will be found. And it's been treasured for thousands of years. I wonder if he would put a, a byline or a, a post. He does say at the end of that, because everything keeps circling around and around that it's pointless and meaningless. But he said, that's life. That's this world. But God is what makes it meaningful. God and following his commandments is what makes it all why we're here. That part he got right. But as I thought about this truth, he said what? History repeats itself. You look at what was going on at that time when, when Israel was in Jerusalem. We said, you know, you, you go back to that deportation. I say that all the time because what did King Nebuchadnezzar try to do? He tried to take the Jews out of Israel, put him in Babylon to get them to forget about God. They wanted to drive God out of them, immerse them in their culture, immerse them in their language, immerse them in their, their worship, and they no longer would remember Yahweh. But it didn't happen. It backfired. Because God was hidden and tucked in their hearts. They knew the Torah. They knew the word of God. Okay, fast forward to Jesus' time. This time the Jews weren't displaced. But who came in? Rome. And when Rome occupied them, along with Rome came all of their foreign gods and their practices and their worship. And so what they tried to do was integrate from inside. They tried to change the culture. I mean, they kind of left the Jews alone for the most part, but they tried to change their culture into the Roman way, the sophisticated way of living. Has it changed? Go 2,000 years? No. What happens? Nothing is new under the sun. What comes around goes around. History repeats itself. We've been watching a lot of documentaries recently on Hitler and the Holocaust, but then Mao Zedong with the Chinese, and how those two were so close together, what they were doing in their own respective countries it was scary when you really kind of look at what's going on. We know a lot about Hitler, but I didn't know that much about China at that time. But what's going on in America? It's following the same trajectory again. History repeats itself. Nothing is new under sun. But then you see all the stuff that we have on the news, and what is truth? There's always just a little snippet of truth hidden, but you have to dig through all of that to find it. I, I I follow a couple different people pretty close, and this this one gentleman he was posting this last week. I got an email from him, and they said that. So this gentleman, he was from Florida, who's now in Russia, and that really doesn't matter so much, but he was taking publications, so like you have the Chicago, is it the Chicago Sun or the Chicago Tribune, whatever, he did the reverse. He put a different name behind it and made it look like a legit newspaper. And he took the Washington Post and he made the Washington Chronicles or something like that or whatever. I mean, he had all these, he had like four different newspapers, and he would take articles that were written by the Washington Post, and he would slant it and change it and then put it out on this other publication. And people were buying because it was cheaper. And so they were buying these other publications, so they're reading this news, these news articles, and believing what was in it. Well, what he was trying to do was stir the pot because it was false information. Well, okay, that's been going on for decades. That wasn't the issue. The issue is now that we have AI, <laughs> And I said, if you're like me and I'm a farm girl, it took a long time before AI really soaked in that it means artificial intelligence. <laughs> Not what I always knew it to be. There's a few farm people here, they know what I mean. But because of AI, things have exploded. You probably, you can't, unless you're living under a rock, you can't not know this in just the news. He now has over 300 publications through AI that are writing these articles. 
Artificial intelligence is literally writing the articles with a different slant or false information or whatever, and just bombarding the airwaves with this. Well, if you read that, how do you know if it's true or if it's false? You don't, unless you know the source. I said, but we, we've had this for the last couple decades, but now the, the, the trend has really been We'll throw out a lie into the media. We'll splash it all over the, the headlines of the articles three times throughout the week. This lie, this lie, this lie. And then on Friday, they'll run a little retraction at the bottom of the page that says that that article was false. But who sees the byline? And even if you did, if you saw the article, and of course, and everybody runs with it, if you saw the headlines and the articles, and you saw it over and over and over again, which are you going to remember? The byline that said, oh yeah, that was all false? Or are you going to remember what you've been seeing? You know, sometimes this gets a little personal. I have a, a friend who was um, accused of some pretty horrible stuff, and it has been splashed all over and I knew when I saw it, even though I didn't know the story, I know the person. And I said, yeah, there's more to the story than that. That, that just can't be right. Well, then as you start to learn the whole story, that's totally opposite. But unless I knew the source, who am I going to believe? What was printed in the paper? Or the truth? That's actually happened several times. I've had that happen to me. I've been accused of horrible things at different times in my life. And there was not a shred of truth to it. But the closest people who know you know the truth. I remember, um, <laughs> I didn't share this at the last one, but I, I know with um, one of our daughters, we've always told our daughters, your integrity, how you act in front of people, how you carry yourself, if you are a good and truthful and kind person, if you are ever accused of anything, people are not going to believe it because they know you. Well, we said that until our daughter was accused of some pretty horrible stuff. And guess what? Even though they knew her, even though they knew that that wasn't even in her makeup, guess which side they chose? And I remember the day eighth grade freshman, she came crying because she said, you told me that if I was upstanding and people knew the real me, that this wouldn't happen. That was an ouch. The truth, well, the truth eventually came out. But guess what? They believed the other stuff so much that it didn't matter. Hmm, what is the truth. Jesus tells us what the truth is. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you were to put that on a headline in a newspaper article right now, what do you think all the commentary would be on it? False. Right? I would get banned from Facebook probably. <laughs> Because it's false information. There's all roads to heaven. There's all ways to God. Jesus isn't the truth. You know, if you don't know your scriptures, we, I think they've since pulled it so far from the shelves, but there was a new translation of the Bible that was a very respected translation that had gone in and had deleted the deity of Christ in every place that talked about Jesus being the Son of God. If you did not know your scriptures, would you know that? No. That's why Jesus says, the truth, when you know it, it will set you free. You know, when Hitler, one of the main things he did when he came in, he started banning books what did he do to the Bibles? He burned them. And it was those, those Jewish people that were in the Nazi concentration camps who had the scriptures on their heart. 
who had them memorized in their brain. And that was the hope that kept them going. And for those that didn't, the ones that did would recite them day and night, giving hope, giving comfort, giving healing words, sharing the salvation of God at that time for them. And the ones that were Christian were sharing the truth. As I looked at what happened in China, it was the same thing. And I don't know if it will happen here or not, but there's a lot of things that I said wouldn't happen here that have already happened immediately in a very short amount of time. So my question is, what if, what if, who knows, would come in and take all the Bibles and ban the Bibles and burn the Bibles? You go, well, I got my phone. Who do you think owns the, <laughs> the internet? If they were to cut off all resources for you to be able to read the Word of God, how much do you know in your heart that you can recite? Now, I will admit I am terrible with knowing. I know every one of these scriptures. I couldn't tell you that they were John 8, 32, and I couldn't tell you that they were, you know, 2 Timothy 2, 15, but I knew the scriptures. They've been buried in my heart. It is in those times that that's where our hope comes from, where our help comes from. Have you ever had that where you're sitting in a situation and you've been desperate for an answer and all of a sudden, boom, a scripture pops into your head? That is the Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. It said, He does not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, meaning He is that conduit from God. You say, Lord, help me. Boom, Psalms. So where did my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And you say, Lord, what is the truth? And I love this one where it talked about the Word. Paul says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the Word of truth. You see that? They have the word of truth. If I was to rewrite this translation, I would capitalize the word word. Because <laughs> who is the word? Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and all things that were made were made in and through him, and nothing was made without him. John 1.1. 1, 1. The word is Jesus. And Jesus is what? I am the truth. <laughs> Tell you what, though, if you went out there and you started splashing on everything, that Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the only way. You're going to get backlash. You're going to get a lot of backlash. But when it is talked in your heart, when you know it beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is nobody who can take that away from you. And it doesn't matter if this was way back in the beginning. Or if it was in Solomon's time, or if it was in Jesus' time, or if it's in our time. Nothing is new under heaven. What we do know, when it said that it would talk about the future things, it talked about Satan. He said he is the father of what? Lies. Deceit. He doesn't change because time goes on. He doesn't mellow like some of us when we get older and we get kinder. You've had that, haven't you? Have you had some relations that you were like when you were younger, you couldn't stand, and then, and then when you see them when they're a lot older, you go, they're kind of nice now. <laughs> they mellow. No, Satan doesn't mellow. He does not change. And he's going to do whatever he can to stir the pot, to cause trouble, to cause to see. He's the one that's behind the headlines that are false. So, I was saying way back when, there's been a movement that's been going on along. Before racism became a huge, I mean, back in the public square, became a huge word again, I knew it was coming down the pike because of what I was getting. And sure enough, then it came with George Floyd. I didn't know what was going to be a conduit, but I knew something was about to break because of everything that had been coming prior to that. And then afterwards, I said, uh-oh, watch out, colonialism is the next big word. And it was, all white people are bad. 
And then I said, uh oh, the next thing is going to be white supremacy. And now that's what they've been. And then the next thing was, now we're going to turn it. I said, Christian nationalist, be careful. That's the next word. And I started looking at that and digging into it. And did you know that if you really look, it says we haven't even defined it yet, but they'll tell you how bad it is and that you're that? <laughs> it was a little broader term. Now they're turning it more into there's patriotism and Christian nationalism. Are there extremes on all sides? Yes, yes. There's always extremes. And there's always going to be those bad apples that ruin it for everything. We're called to be what? The hands and feet of Jesus. The songs that we say. That was what? That was it. It was being the hands and feet of Jesus. What do we look like as Christians to the world? But through all that, what is the truth? You know, it's just like yeah, politics and fence is the beginning of time. <laughs> I would say from, from the Canaanite people, right after when Cain killed the people, there have been politics. There's always going to be whatever. What is the truth? Our truth is when we go to God and we say, when the world seems like it's in utter chaos, the world seems like it's crazy, God, what is truth? And how do you want me to speak it? How do you want me to be the voice of reason in the chaos? How do you want me to be the light in the darkness? That's what John, 1 John said. If we can have fellowship with him, with who? With Jesus. While we walk in darkness. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about saying. While we have fellowship with the devil, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. It comes down to all these scriptures are between light and dark, between Christ and the enemy. But if you only memorize one verse, memorize from John 14, 6, when Jesus answers point blankly to everybody what the truth is, the headline should be splashed. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And you will know the truth, and that truth will set you free. Amen. So we come to our time of prayer. There's a lot people on our hearts and minds, those who have lost loved ones. We've had a lot of people, a lot of fatality accidents, fatal accidents. Branch is not working this morning. <laughs> on 34, right there at 34 and 81, there was two within 24 hours of each other, and then there was another one that was just up the road a quarter mile by the airport. Um, not sure why. Um, so Carla that's come, her son's classmate, was just killed in an accident yesterday, and his 13-year-old son was in the car. They didn't even know his son was in the car until they were cutting the cars apart, and they found him, and he actually survived. But the drivers of both cars were killed. Um, and then we had the shooting last night. Um, we have those who were killed, those who are suffering right now, I mean, that are grasping for life. And President Trump, we just, there is so much turmoil but we know that God is overall. And we know, unfortunately, he knew this was coming. Why it happens is because we're given free will. And unfortunately, others get the backside of our free will sometimes. Are there others that we would like to lift up? If you bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we come thinking of Val Jones and her family and, and Heath and Dawn and their entire family. We know that the loss of loved ones are so, it, it leaves such a hole in the heart. Even though we know that with all of them they have accepted you, they knew the truth. And they are now in your presence, but it still is hard here on earth. We know that there are so many families that are reeling of loss here just recently with all of the fatalities. We ask that if they don't know you, that 
you would bring men and women into their lives that can show them the truth and show them where comfort and healing and hope lies. We ask that you would just be with not only our nation, but our world, that you would be with all of our fellow Christian brothers and sisters around the entire world, as there are so many missionaries that are out there trying to spread your truth. So that way, not less, no person should perish. We thank you for coming, for humbling yourself and becoming man and, and submitting to what the Father allowed you to do and to say. But knowing that we would face times like this without words, he even gave you a prayer that you taught us to pray. So that way we can pray to you anytime, anywhere, whether we have our Bibles, whether we don't. Your word is placed upon our heart. If you would join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we come to Christ's feast, we come doing what has been done for over 2,000 years. We come in fellowship and thanksgiving, invited to the feast, invited, remembering the night in which Christ sat with his disciples, and he lifted up the loaf that represented the Messiah. <laughs> and he said, this is now my body, which is broken for you. Every time you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. Then he picked up the cup of salvation and he told them the truth. He said, this is now going to be a new covenant. It's going to be a covenant between myself and you. It will be my blood which will be poured out for the forgiveness of all sin. Every time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And so as the body of Christ. We come before Christ's feast, eating and drinking, remembering that he is the chosen Messiah, and it was his blood that was shed for our forgiveness, and proclaiming it to all who will listen. Amen. If you would join with me in the next hymn, we're going to sing page 101, Gentle Shepherd.
we realize that our wisdom is but foolishness compared to the beauty and power of your word, that our greatest generosity is stingy compared to your self-giving love. In your wisdom and love, you have given us the living bread of Christ Jesus, the bread that gives eternal life. As we eat this physical bread this morning, help us realize that our true bread, our true source of life, is the living presence of Jesus Christ. May your spirit guide us. Amen. Father God, your gifts of love are overwhelming and overflowing, and we thank you. You are our creator and sustainer and the source of all our joy. This cup we now pour reminds us that in the spilling of the blood of Christ, there was death, but out of that death came unstoppable, abundant life. As we drink this cup, seal us by your Holy Spirit, that within our lives and through our actions, your steadfast love and your faithfulness may find expression, and that we may spread the good news of life abundant in Jesus Christ our Savior. in darkness or in deceit. May you go in his son Jesus Christ who is the word, the truth, the salvation and life. And may you go in the Holy Spirit that keeps his word tucked in your heart and in your mind now and forevermore. Amen. 